His name was James DeMarco, okay? He lived in a community called Blacksburg, Virginia. He, he was a ultra marathon runner, okay? So what I would classify him under is a very boring human being, you know? He liked to go out and run by himself and do things. And he called me one day and he said, um, the high school in Blacksburg asked him if he would like to be the cross country coach and track coach for Blacksburg High School. Now you guys are all high school coaches, so it's like in Texas, it's like a division two school. It's a small, small school that caters to the people that live in the town of Blacksburg. And Blacksburg outside of Virginia Tech University is about 30 to 40,000 people. So it's not a big town, okay? So he said to me, he said, Doug, I'm gonna come up, I got a plan of what I'm gonna do and I want you to, I want you to listen to it and tell me if it makes sense. I said, okay. So he comes up and he said, here's what I'm gonna do. He said, I'm gonna have four or 500 kids to my cross country team and my track team at the high school. I said, what? What, what are you going to do? Tell me that four or five hundred kids. So I got to play. I said, Phew, you've been running too long, too far. Some, something's going bad here. Um, I said, how are you going to do that? He said, well, here's my plan. He I'll tell everybody to come off the track. And he said, what I'm going to do is every Friday, I'm going to go into all the neighborhoods and start running. And the kids are going to follow me. We're going to do like that Rocky movie. Remember where Rocky ran? And, and went up the steps in Philadelphia. In fact, they got a statue there now and all the people in the community followed him. He said, I'm gonna do the same thing. I said, well, you're not, you're not Sylvester Stallone, but you know, let's try it out. So well, he started and after a month, he called me, he said, I said, how's it going with your uh, cross country team? He goes, well, he said, I had five kids this week. He said, five kids, one girl and four boys. And he said, I said, well, tell them to each bring a friend. And I said, why don't you get one of their mothers to cook breakfast someplace for you on a grill? And the kids come in and get breakfast before they go to school. Try that. He said, that sounds like a good idea. So he called me the next Friday and he said, hey, Doug, I had 13 kids this week because they all wanted breakfast. Okay. Well, he kept going. Long story short, five years later, Blacksburg High School was the number one cross country team in the United States, okay? He ended up having 300 kids on his cross country team and they won, they won a foot locker and they won all these track and field distance stuff all over the country. His kids, his kids went to some of the best schools for distance running and it was all because he had a really good plan and he executed and it took him five years to do it, but it happens. You guys can do it in every community, any community you want there. Now here's one of the keys though. Everybody's heard you got a dream. Everybody's heard you gotta have a plan. Everybody's heard that you gotta take it on a journey. Everybody here's gotta have a lot of grid behind it. But here's what everybody forgets about. The one thing, you gotta freaking start the journey. You gotta get up, you gotta get up and go. Gotta get up and go. And the best story I ever heard about that, guy was telling me that one day, he said, I just wanna make you go, and he said, I gotta do all this stuff, gotta get this, gotta get this accomplished before I die. And I said, well, that's really good, you got that goal. He said, because you know why? And I said, why? He said, did you ever see a hearse pulling a U-Haul? Okay, all the stuff you accomplished, you gotta get it done in your lifetime because you can't, can't take it with you. You can't, you can't take anything with you. And then I remember, probably some of you heard it, uh, somebody got into the hospital when Stephen Job was, was on his last few days of life and somebody taped his last words that he was telling his wife, okay? And Stephen Job was telling his wife. And I thought it really, really was important
important because what Stephen Jones said to his wife, and he's, he's laying in the bed and he's got, he's got less than 48 hours to live. He said, do you know what I realized when I've been laying here the last few days? This Rolex that I got on my wrist, a Timex that you buy at the drugstore keeps as good a time. The Rolls Royce that I had to have somebody drive me in to go to my meetings, that little old jalopy gets there just as fast and probably gets better gas mileage. You know, the bigger the house, the more you got to clean. You know, he said the bottom line is Americans strive for the wrong thing. They don't strive for happiness. They don't strive for contentment. They don't strive to have a great journey. What they strive is to outdo the Joneses and the Smiths. And you got this car, I'm going to have a better car. You got this watch, I'm going to have a better watch. That's not life. 